For me, it was the day before or after a year of planning and preparation. The bike's at impound, everything's ready to go, and uh, you know it's about to start. And I had a couple of hours left to myself. And I distinctly remember laying in the bed of my hotel room there in Barcelona. And everybody that's ever raced knows what butterflies are like. Well, I had that times one trillion. <laughs> I had the worst feeling in the world of butterflies that, oh man, now it's going to start. And you know that for the next three weeks that your life is going to be holy hell because it's nothing about, you know, Dakar's about suffering, living on the edge, living like an animal, sleeping on the ground at night, hanging off the back of a motorcycle at 100 miles an hour across terrain you've never seen before, extreme danger, extreme risk, and it never stops. Even when you're off the bike, you're still in that uh, in that mode. So there was that moment, Grant, for me that where I was like, man, and I just I just dreaded that moment. I knew it was going to be just holy. My life was going to be nothing but pain and suffering for the foreseeable future. Right. Absolutely. Uh, any advice for any other uh, 48 year old guys who want to do this? Just go do it. <laughs> Don't even mortgage your house. Sell everything you have. Uh, take loans out on whatever you can do, but go do it. I mean, you know, I, you know, the experience of doing Dakar is it's uh, unequaled uh, in this world. You know, uh, at the end of day, at the end of time, I mean, you know, you, there's the material things that you have and acquire and all these other things that mean absolutely nothing. But there's the experience that really does, um, you know tell you that you led a full and, 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 and unique life and you know things like that and not just a car but any dream you have, two wheel dream you have on a motorcycle, track it down and, and chase it down and do it.